Gabrielle forming in the Atlantic with another wave of interest behind it. All the details in today's video. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this beautiful Tuesday for many of us out there. It is September 16th uh, as I'm recording this again on a Tuesday evening. And uh, we're watching the tropics. We've got Gabrielle likely to form here uh, over the next uh, really any moment now. I think we'll get a name here from the National Hurricane Center and then another area behind that that we're also watching. So plenty to discuss uh, throughout the video today. Now, uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. And if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're always in the loop here on the latest model data, which uh, is always changing, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, uh, and uh, my analysis of those changes. Now, uh, let's try to keep things short and sweet today, and let's just dive right on into things. We'll give you a general look here at the Atlantic, and uh, not hard to find where future Gabrielle is. It's already definitely got a very cyclonic look to it. It, very large wave as well. We're going to dive into it uh, in a more in-depth way on its own here in a second, but we're watching that. We've got uh, the slow pressure now working up into the mid-Atlantic, although not tropical, is uh, you know originating here from the tropics, but definitely a mid-latitude cyclone on that one. Uh, you can just tell by looking at it. It just does not look very tropical, although is bringing impacts that we'll be talking about later on in the video as well. And then we've got some other wave action out here uh, into the Atlantic uh, here north of the islands, uh, which is uh, currently dealing with some wind shear and then also some storminess over uh, portions of the Gulf and Caribbean. But that as well, just not very organized, not much cyclonic in nature with it. So. We've got some things out there, but one of them that is definitely a lot more interesting than the others. Uh, now, I did want to show you this, and uh, you can kind of see what's going on out there. This is our Saharan air layer, and uh, this is over the past five days. And you can see this is the system slowly becoming more and more organized in that time frame. And we still do have plenty of dust up here uh, into portions of the Atlantic. But generally speaking, uh, this system fighting off uh, that dust pretty well and now likely to, again, get that name Gabrielle here very soon. And because that. Sure enough, the National Hurricane Center has it tagged. I'm going to refresh it here just to make sure that we are at the same numbers. Yeah, 90% chance that this will get the name Gabrielle over the next 48 hours. And then a new wave behind it having a 20% chance of developing over the next seven days. So things heating up out here and plenty to analyze. And speaking of it, let's go ahead and dive into this system itself, uh, show you the current conditions, show you where it's moving and the likelihood of it gaining that name and how strong it could end up. All right, here's a new segment I'm going to try to start including in the videos whenever we have any sort of tropical system. Actually, uh, learn from this website and a class I'm in right now, Tropical Meteorology, funnily enough how that works, right? Uh, but uh, it's a great website that we can just take a lot of looks in different ways at the current system and kind of try to figure out what's going on. So this is what it looks like right now. I've got things zoomed out. Here's the system, and you can already tell immediately it has kind of that shrimp head look to it. Here would be the eye, and then here's kind of the tail of the shrimp. Uh, so it's definitely looking very organized. And again, I'll be honest with you, you're going to see here from some of the data, I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't already a tropical system. Uh, now, that's kind of the zoomed out view. Uh, and I do want to show you our, uh, let's see if I can find it over here, a couple other things. Yeah. So we've got our sea surface temperatures and uh, you can again see this little eye right here where the system is. And the general path it's working towards is an area of plenty warm enough waters. Uh, anything, again, that is kind of that yellow color or higher up on the scale there on your right is going to be more uh, or less conducive enough to produce a tropical system, a tropical cyclone. Uh, we've got that that we can look at. We've got ocean heat content. This is another very important tool to look at. And you can see also working in an area with some brighter colors here and deeper ocean waters. Uh, you know, we've got about 50 meters of depth over here, eventually going to potentially get in an area closer to 100 meters of depth uh, there of those very warm sea surface or uh, just sea temperatures, I should say, if we're dealing with depth there. Uh, so we've got those things. That's definitely something. What about shear? Uh, well, we can go back to the infrared so you can see where the system is. Now, right now, it's kind of creating its own environment, a little bit of favorable shear over the center of this thing. To the north, though, uh, we do have a kind of tongue here of some higher end wind shear values uh, that we will need to watch for. Now, uh, you can also see, though, eventually there's another pocket up here of more favorable wind shear. So it's going to be fighting a little bit of shear over the next little bit. That uh, will definitely be something uh, that we need to kind of keep an eye on for maybe something that will help us out a little bit. Uh, so those are kind of the current environmental conditions. Let me also show you uh, surface convergence and upper level divergence. And notice these blue circles in here are uh, low level convergence where the wind is coming together that promotes uh, rising motion and lower pressure. So we've got that. We've also got upper level divergence above that uh, here right over the system. So that checks out. That's definitely favorable for uh, 
um, uh, intensification, excuse me. Uh, and uh, also something we take a look at is the vorticity map. And you definitely see we've also got some vorticity right where the storm is. So all things point to the fact that this is likely uh, very close to becoming a tropical system, if not already. And something else we can take a look at um, is a pass here from some of our satellites. And you can definitely see they're indicating that we have a cyclonic rotation and already a closed center. Uh, it looks a little displaced here, but I think that might just be some of the data being slightly off from where they actually took it but you can definitely see a closed center here we've got a tropical system uh, this is definitely one that is going to be warm cord we'll see if we have any uh, info on that uh, yeah we check our AMSU channels and see if there's any uh, satellite passes on that and uh, it doesn't look like we have any, unfortunately. But again, this is in the tropics. This one is going to be warm cord and is not going to be, a, you know, a mid-latitude cyclone by any means whenever you're at these latitudes. Also something they don't talk a lot about here on the channel, but we are above kind of that 5 to 10 degree mark, uh, which is where you have enough spin from Coriolis to actually produce a system. So uh, you can definitely see spinning away there, likely to become Gabrielle at any moment and going to be working into an environment that looks pretty conducive for it to continue to strengthen. Although, yeah, some wind shear out there. And uh, we can also even show the dry air. There is some dry air around as well, but not enough that would likely completely choke out the system. All right, that's a current look at it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some model data and time out where this thing's going. All right, I've got the GFS model here, and I'll also show you the European. I'll be honest with you, though, folks, uh, the models have done a pretty horrendous job <laughs> this year uh, in the tropics and really just all across the board. So, you know, we'll take it with a grain of salt, but obviously, you know, part of this channel is showing the model runs, so we will do so, and uh, we'll move it out ahead in time. You can see the GFS getting this into a named storm over the next couple of days. Kind of keeps a steady, a weak tropical storm intensity through that time frame, and then eventually, as we go further out into time, we get a hurricane to begin to develop out of this thing and gets awfully close to Bermuda by early to the middle part of next week, and then eventually curving out to sea, and you can see another wave there behind it as well. Uh, let's show you the European computer model and uh, a slightly different view, but same thing. You can see that area of vorticity out here. I'll circle it right here. That's the storm. So kind of similar on the European here over the next couple of days, maintaining tropical storm intensity Then starts to develop it a little bit quicker into higher end intensity uh, after that by this week. And we've got a hurricane by Saturday on the European and again, curving out to sea, but further away from Bermuda than uh, maybe the GFS was. I can also show you something else um, that uh, I'm going to pull up here on the fly. I know everything in today's video is a little bit on the fly, but uh, I think that's okay. Yeah, here we go. All right. I will show you this the intensity guidance from some of our models. What are they showing? And uh, they are showing uh, that this system is going to have some room to run. Now, just about all of our models do begin to get this higher up in intensity. Um, so definitely you know, keep that in mind. But some of our hurricane models are getting this a lot higher, up to even major hurricane status by the time we get a little bit closer to this weekend. So uh, it's going to have room to run. I don't think um, you know this one is going to be anything too too crazy but uh, definitely some of our models showing a major hurricane i think no matter what this gets to hurricane status will we get a cat four or five it could happen definitely but uh, you can see most guidance a little bit lower but the hurricane models which can be a little bit better with intensity are running uh, a little bit higher up here the good news though is as i showed you on the track most models keep it away from land some of them get a little bit closer to uh, Bermuda, which we'll need to take a very close look at here, uh, definitely over the coming days. Um, this is one of the reasons this is likely to strengthen. You saw that pocket of lower end wind shear up to where it's going. That'll help it out. Also, uh, let me show you this one first. We've got very warm ocean temperatures out here, folks, where this system is going to track. And just a reminder, it's kind of right here right now. It's going to do something kind of like this and get up near, you know, these 30, 29 degrees Celsius waters. These is uh, mid to upper 80s in Fahrenheit. And uh, the uh, depth of that water is pretty solid as well, going, you know, anywhere from 75 or so meters in depth. You really want at least about 50. This is definitely above that. So it looks to be pretty conducive for intensification. I think slow intensification the next couple of days, and then maybe rapid intensification by the weekend, where, yeah, as some of those models showed, could get up to major hurricane status. Would not surprise me, but hopefully, again, this one will Stay with the fish, but to confirm that thought process, let's go ahead and take a look at some ensemble data and see if they agree that this one should uh, or should, excuse me, curve back up to sea. Here are the latest ensembles from our American model, and sure enough, most of them showing a curve up and uh, out to sea. You can see here staying north of the islands and then getting close to Bermuda. So, like I said, we'll need to watch that, but really a pretty good clustering here of an out to sea track. Now. You never say never in meteorology, obviously, but uh, I think confidence pretty high right now that this one not going to impact the United States. 
Also noticing the Bay of Campeche here, Bay of Campeche. I've heard people pronounce it either way. I say Campeche, uh, you know, whatever whatever floats your boat though, right? Uh, so we do, uh, do need to watch this. This has been something I've talked about about a week or so ago that the pattern could be supportive of that. Um, so there's a little cluster there we'll definitely keep our eye on. The European ensembles, uh, not as excited about that uh, Bay slash Gulf potential, but again, we'll see how it trends could go either way. But very good consensus here from this system that it will be pulling up and out to sea, but uh, we do need to watch some of these members get a little bit closer to Bermuda, most of them out to sea, uh, away from anybody, but uh, some a little bit closer to the island. Almost all members get this up to uh, a pretty strong hurricane, at least a Category 3, some of them even finding Category 4 or even 5 status, which uh, that would be the most poetic thing to think, uh, I think, out of this one or to have would be a Category 5. We've had all tropical storms this year. We had one Cat 5 snuck in there with Aaron, and then maybe this one will be a Cat 5 too. I think that's all we know how to do this hurricane season is an insane storm over the ocean or just weak tropical storms, but we'll take it. And uh, behind this one, uh, you do see that next wave potentially trying to develop, uh, not as as excited on the ensembles right now, but again, that one going to be working in the same environment this one worked through uh, that helped it get close to um, becoming a named storm. So we'll continue to watch that one as well. With all that said, though, we do have some interesting weather going on back home. So let's bring things on back to the lower 48. Well, the main area of note right now is this coastal low that is just spinning away. And boy, oh boy, does this thing look impressive right now on radar. You can see that very clear donut look and uh, bringing some pretty impactful weather here to the Chesapeake and Delmarva, even all the way down to Virginia Beach, getting pretty good rain and onshore flow. So uh, this one, I wouldn't say snuck up on us, but the forecast was pretty wrong for it, to be completely honest. We had uh, a couple days ago, most models bringing this into the Carolinas like this and bringing rain to a lot of us. And then now it kind of really hasn't made much of a landfall until now and it's working right up into the Chesapeake. So uh, it's been a tricky forecast on this one, but bringing very impactful weather from the Outer Banks all the way up into the Delmarva there. So uh, keeping a close eye on that and is bringing some showers into the Carolinas, but really not much other than that. We are getting some severe weather today, and this has been kind of the theme recently. I told you we would get some of these uh, severe weather days up into the plains with the current upper level pattern that's happening out through Nebraska, Kansas, and then even some severe storms this evening out towards Louisiana, not far from the Mississippi River Valley. So that's kind of the weather back home right now. I do want to quickly time out this uh, system here into the mid-Atlantic for you. And uh, again, this will be quick, but notice heavy rain uh, working in right in the Virginia Beach area through the Chesapeake. Uh, could also bring some coastal flooding. Again, where we have onshore flow, you can see winds coming out of the north here, uh, right into the Virginia Beach area, Norfolk, uh, Newport News, that general area of getting probably the brunt of it. And uh, then eventually by tomorrow morning, this kind of works inland and starts to fizzle out a little bit, but still bringing some showers uh, up into the surrounding area area and uh, kind of continuing and then out of here by Thursday. So uh, a sneaky little system, one that's bringing pretty high impacts, I'd say, to a very isolated area. But if you live there, uh, let me know what you're seeing. Definitely heavy rain and some coastal flooding looking to be a possibility. Let's go ahead and now take a look at those upper level maps and time out what's on the way the rest of this week. Well, per usual, the math is checking out with what we're actually seeing on the ground. We've got two uh, kind of cutoff lows here, if you will. One right where we have our coastal storm near Virginia, and then another back up into uh, the Rockies that is fueling some of those active storms over the plains. So always love it when the upper level map makes sense with what we're seeing at the surface. That uh, makes me feel like my degree is uh, actually doing its job, right? Love it when that happens. But uh, as we go ahead in a time, honestly, folks, the pattern is not very exciting. There's nothing of note until right about here. This is about seven, eight days or so from now. Some of our models hinting that maybe yeah, we could get something to try to work into the east, maybe a cutoff low, maybe some sort of storm system. Uh, it might be a little bit easier probably to see here on our vorticity map. You could see right now, again, kind of matching what we see where we've got the vorticity advection or where it's moving to is where we have the active weather. So uh, that always uh, again good to see that making sense. Keep it going ahead into time. Uh, and you can see here comes that next system that uh, the European model is showing at least. And if you want, we can pull up I uh, say if you want, like you have any say in it, right? I'm doing this right now. But uh, let's pull up the GFS and see if it kind of shows the same thing here. We'll do it all together at the same time. It's loading, it's loading, and uh, it has something in that time frame, but again, very different on the evolution of it and kind of a one-two punch. It's got something here and then something down there. So model's not fully uh, buying into the same story here, but either way, again, I don't see any major storm systems crossing the country over the next week. Now, again, we'll see some... 
a storminess here over the plains over the next couple of days. We've got that current system, obviously, over Virginia causing active weather. And like I said, it is bringing very active weather if you're right in that confined area, but not on a large scale is it bringing uh, anything of note, again, through a big region of the country. Keep it going, though. Yeah, not much showing up on the European. And then here comes even that next system. Doesn't look all that exciting on the model. Um, this was kind of interesting. And it just for some fun little, you know, meteorology that probably will not happen, but is interesting. Ten days from now, again, well in La La Land, the European has a storm hitting Mexico from the Pacific and then somehow manages to keep the energy crossing the Rockies of uh, Mexico or whatever they want to call it there. I'm not sure exactly. I should probably check on my geography skills. And then gets it into the Gulf and then hits uh, Texas with it, which is uh, just kind of one of those crazy model runs. So it's not going to happen, but always fun to look at uh, when not much else is going on. Rainfall over the next seven days, folks. I mean, you better hope you get some, honestly, because uh, some of us are starting to get into drought concerns here in Charlotte. It's becoming a concern now. And in the Northeast, it's uh, becoming a concern. And uh, also leading to fall foliage, getting an early start. I've already seen some leaves changing color in Charlotte. And for the middle of September, it's pretty early to be seeing that. So some of the drought causing problems. But definitely seeing some rain over the plains, like I said, over the next seven days. It's where we have some lift in the atmosphere. Temperature wise, we look to you know get pretty warm or at least a high probability of being above average in the six to 10 day range here shown on the CPC outlook. And uh, you know even all the way through the end of the month looks above average for most of us. And uh, trust me, you'll feel that heat. It's gonna start to get hot over the next couple of days for a lot of us as well. All right, that's all I got for you on this wonderful Tuesday evening, but I'll see all of y'all tomorrow with another update.